Saudi Arabia is known for its skyscrapers, architecture and turning desert lands into massive agricultural fields. But none of its previous projects have been as ambitious as the Lion City, a city of the future presented by the government of Saudi Arabia. The Line, as the name suggests, is a linear walled city 200 meters wide and 170 kilometers long and designed to be an entire city composed of two parallels. If you are thinking this sounds like the setting for a futuristic dystopian novel, you are not wrong. This project is part of the bigger campaign initiated by the Saudi government and it's called NEOM. NEOM is an initiative to diversify the economy away from oil and its dependency on the petrodollar. The Line City is being described as a single building, vertical city, outfitted with exterior mirrors, big enough to house 9 million people and built on an area of just 34 square kilometers, which is less than 4 square meters per person. It occupies a fraction of 26,500 square kilometers of an entire area of Neom. This allows for a lighter touch on the landscape than would normally be expected for a megacity with a 9 million population. And as a part of their plan, they are heavily investing in infrastructure projects as well as education, research, health and tourism. Neom is being built in the Tabuk province of Saudi Arabia. It's been built as a special zone and it includes airport, shipping port, industrial areas, research centers, sports and entertainment venues. Neom development is said to be a country within the country that will have its own rules. This line city is right across the Sharm El Sheikh Beach Resort, an Egyptian special zone in the Sinai Peninsula that is far away from Egyptian cities and built only for tourists who happen to be mostly from Russia and Ukraine. It's a little vacation hub of Eastern Europeans at the heart of the Middle East. So Saudi Arabia is trying to recreate it but on a massive and global scale. The linear city design is not a new idea. The Spanish urban planner Arturo Sorio Mata developed a linear city concept in 1882. This concept allows great efficiencies in infrastructures such as water, electricity, gas and transport by integrating it along a narrow linear urban corridor. This architectural research aims at increasing the quality of life by bringing the countryside to the city and public transportation more efficient than personal cars, which are a major source of noise and pollution. The linear city concept is only a continuation of buildings connected to each other and the project may stop and restart when there is more population. For example, most capitals of the world are circular and sprawls as the population grows, decreasing the agricultural capacity and decimating the environment. Generally, the one-dimensionality of the city helps to protect the agricultural land while decreasing desertification and protecting animal and plant life. As we have talked about in the video how China is feeding its huge population, urban sprawl is one of the biggest threats to Chinese agriculture and food security. More than anywhere, this linear city concept is prevalent in the former Soviet countries. For example, this is the city of Krivoy Rok in Ukraine. It's not particularly one building, but it is considered to be the longest city in the world with a span of 126 kilometers from north to south. And it technically is a linear city. There are lots of single linear and circular buildings in Russia as well. For example, this is in St. Petersburg and 18,000 people live in this huge building. The circular building is in Moscow and there are almost 1,000 apartments in it. So Saudi Arabian government is trying to recreate this project into reality. According to the architects, the line would be built in three layers, a surface level pedestrian layer full of parks and open spaces, a lower service layer, an even deeper transportation layer that would consist of high-speed transit. This connects the different city modules so that all daily services and important facilities would be walkable within five minutes of each node on the line. 
Theoretically, the small woods of the city will reduce the area of infrastructure and create efficiency of city functions. A trip from one end of the city to the other by so-called ultra-high-speed rail will take about 20 minutes. The line would be 100% renewable and would have zero carbon emissions. So it will not have traditional highways and automobile infrastructure. So there will not be cars whatsoever. Enclosed by glass panels on two sides, the city will have its own climate all year round, along with everything they need from parks, waterfalls, flying taxis, and even robot mates. There are even plans to include an artificial moon for residents to gaze upon. It's quite insane. This linear city is a new approach to urban design by distributing urban functions vertically, allowing people to move in three dimensions, up, down and across to access infrastructure, a concept called zero-gravity urbanism. At first glance, the project appears to be environmentally impressive. The urban edge is no more than 100 meters from any point in the city, but there are lots of problems with it. Residing in a such a gargantuan structure implies a claustrophobic lifestyle. This 170 kilometer long structure is 500 meters high. It's quite significant since it's equivalent to a conventional 125 story building. Suppose the width of a single 125-story building is 50 meters, a building 170 km long, 500 meters high, single structure, such as the line, would be the same as building 3,400 skyscrapers. For the perspective, these are the top 5 cities in the world that have completed skyscrapers taller than 150 meters, and these are their numbers. Additionally, there are only 8 skyscrapers in the world that are higher than 500 meters, and Saudi Arabia wants to build an equivalent of 3,400 skyscrapers 500 meters high. So this is a massive world-building project that is too crazy to be true. Another problem is that the walls of these gargantuan structures are a mirror. It might create a line of fire around the area. For example, recently, even though London is not famous for hot weather, the reflective design of a new skyscraper in the city is melting cars and setting surrounding buildings on fire. So imagine how it's going to be in a 50 degrees Celsius Saudi Arabian desert. The most important factor is the cost. The Saudi government announced that it will invest $500 billion in the NEON project, but this is only a fraction of the cost. The kingdom is trying to promote this project worldwide, trying to attract investors, and investors are expected to cover at least 50% of the project or more. For example, there is a misconception about Dubai is that all of the skyscrapers and fancy malls are built with oil money. It's not entirely correct. Around 70% or more of skyscrapers in Dubai are built by private international real estate companies whose investors are dirty politicians of all countries of the world and organized criminals. They are all laundering money investing in real estate. The timeline for when the line will finish is not announced, but first residents are expected to begin moving in by the year 2030. This deadline is shared as a part of a larger countrywide improvement plan called Vision 2030, which is intended to grow 100 million annual tourists and make a smooth transition from oil dependence to tourism, just like the UAE did with Dubai and Abu Dhabi. I think this NEON project is somewhat independent from Saudi Arabia, just like Hong Kong was to mainland China, or Singapore is to Southeast Asia. Hong Kong has been the gateway to Chinese markets, as is Singapore to Asia. And maybe that's the route Saudi Arabia is taking, trying to become a business gateway to the Middle East. Neom will probably be a special access city where foreigners get longer or permanent visas and that type of access that isn't allowed in other parts of the country. What do you think about this project? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This episode is brought to you with the help of these Patreon supporters. If you want to support this channel, head over to Patreon. And thanks to everyone who's supporting. Thanks for watching. More interesting videos are coming up. Please subscribe and hit the like button.